So the main point of this setting screen is that here's a spot for you to set your profile. Uh, at some point you want to add your company logo. And again, it's like every other logo on every other network in that it's proportional. No networks, to my knowledge, at the moment have a rectangular spot for your logo, either vertical or landscape. Here it's a round version of your logo. It's square over on Pinterest. It's like a rounded rectang a rounded square on, on the other networks. So if your logo is wide, it'll probably get cut off. So you need to develop a square version, which should work well on all the networks, but it's going to be round in Pinterest. One annoying thing about this screen is that, let's say I'm changing the name of my Pinterest username, and then I start to write the about you and all of that. It won't check if that name is taken until you click save. So it took a while to write all that about me stuff, and then I click save, and then it tells me, oh, that name's taken. Username is taken. So um, you might have to... You might have to think about it for a moment uh, and check it first. So Victor's Bakery is already taken. So again, only one unique name, only one unique name can have, only one unique entity can have that name. So there's a Victor's Bakery. Maybe I'll do Victor's Bakery two or something. And there is a limit also to how long those things can be. I think three to fifteen. So it should. I, and it's really surprising that Pinterest doesn't have the technology to tell me right away that my name is taken and that I have a limited amount of characters. I have to click OK, because I maybe have been setting all of these settings here. And then finally I go to save, and oh, that one's from five screens ago. I didn't set it right. They don't keep the info, do they? You have to reset everything. I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt it, so that's why I'd want to do it as soon as possible. You only have 160 characters in the about me. Yeah, that one doesn't also tell you until you actually try to publish it. So I'm going to do something here, just for, doesn't really matter. This is a testing account. About me information would be very similar to every other network. I want to write information here with complete sentences, with a few keywords of what this business is to help me get found. Because Pinterest also has a powerful search feature, which we'll look at in a moment. But I don't, I only have 160 characters. I don't have a big space there to, to craft a, a huge soliloquy. So uh, whatever fits within within that space, location of the business, just even in general, San Diego. So family friendly bakery in the heart of East Lake, California. We specialize in blah 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 healthy, etc., etc. I'm going to write what would make sense and, and all of that. I'm going to save that. Showcase, well, after it did save it, it kicks me back here, but I'll go back to the settings. Uh, showcase is their term, which we might use on Twitter for a pinned tweet, or on Facebook as well, a pinned post. And those networks there, if there's one particular post that you always want to be visible first, here they've got it as a showcase. This is relatively new. Now you have, now if you have a business, if you have a business account on Pinterest, see there's another feature why you want the business version. Your profile includes a rotating showcase that lets you highlight your your boards. You can use the new showcase space to highlight anything from seasonal content to your all-time best, whatever helps. So here it's going to be not exactly a slideshow, but based on your boards, it's going to show a certain amount of those boards up there, which you can edit, which we don't have much to do with because we don't have any boards yet. You can put up to five boards that get showcased, that get shown to your visitors on a regular basis. Usually the delete account is at the very end of the settings, but here it's a little higher up. Notice there's these sections before the profile there is deactivated. So if you need to delete this uh, testing account, there it is. 
when we created our Twitter account, there was a spot there about personalized Twitter based on, the, on your website visits, and we can turn that on or off. By default, that topic is on on Pinterest. So if you want to opt out, we have to go here to our settings and say that here. Use sites you visit to improve which recommendations and ads you see and use information from our partners to improve which recommendations. So this isn't saying, don't show me ads. We're not going to be able to skip that. But this is saying, don't monitor my online traffic to decide which ads to show me. So there's really no real nice way to say that. But yeah, these websites are tracking you. They're all doing it to show you ads, sometimes more nefarious reasons, unfortunately. But there's no way to really opt out of ads nowadays. There's ad blockers and all of that, but those aren't foolproof. And if you turn these off, then at least Pinterest won't monitor what you've done to show you stuff. One reason you might leave that on is because if my business is about bakeries and baked goods, and I often visit websites regarding cooking and baked goods and all of that, I will more likely see material on Pinterest about that topic, which could be valuable. And at least from the other side of it, since this is on by default, and a lot of regular people don't really look in the settings, this is on, which helps you. Because if Pinterest is monitoring that people are visiting these cooking sites, I'm a cooking site. My profile or ads may be shown to those people that looked at cooking sites. So for me, I might not like it, for, but for the clients, I love that privacy. There's hardly any reason to ever turn that on. That'll hide you from the search engines. One reason, I guess, is that if you're retooling your site and you don't want it to be visible, but really that is not even a good time to do it. You can change your profile so quickly, there's no reason to hide it from the internet. As you search, you can it builds up your history in Pinterest. You can clear that notifications. Okay, this one, this whole section here, when people create an account, they often get deluged with a lot of emails because it's on by default. Send me an email when anything happens. I personally think that's way too much email. I want to see the notifications of Pinterest in Pinterest. I want to log into Pinterest and deal with Pinterest. I don't want it to fill up my inbox. You could go here individually and say, well, I don't want to show, I, want, I don't want to see emails when someone comments on my pin. But probably for most of us, we don't want emails at all. It'll plead you one time, don't turn it off, but I would recommend turn it off because you've got probably enough emails to deal with. And you're, you'll still see these notifications um, in Pinterest. Or if you get the app, there's an app for Pinterest. So you can get the Pinterest app and get notified there. If you're in Google Chrome, you can also have Pinterest notify you of what's happening on Pinterest even when you're not on Pinterest. If I'm over on uh, Facebook or Amazon in a completely different window, if I have this active and I'm using Google Chrome, it could, Google Chrome itself could still notify me something's going on on Pinterest. But if you're monitoring it, you don't really even need that. Right? Exactly. Too many notifications. And did you, do you turn off all your push notifications on your phone also? No, on that one I leave that one on. I, I would rather personally, uh, I would leave that on because uh, in addition to teaching these classes, I'm part of a company that we manage social media for clients. So I want to be known, if I'm not at a computer, I want to be alerted something's happening on the client's Pinterest. But for us, perhaps personally, too many notifications. So yeah, I could turn that off, and you'll only deal with them when you are logged in. Home feed, um, I would leave that on. That's also sort of uh, shaping Pinterest to what your business is about, so that you see content about your business, and seeing other people's content is helpful for inspiration, reconnaissance, etc. You can connect Pinterest to the other networks so that you can log in with Twitter or Facebook. And to some degree, if you post something on Pinterest, 
it can then automatically get also sent to the other networks. So that's helpful in that I don't have to log into every network to share. Can you target a specific page on Facebook for business pages? I think that's the limitation. I, I don't think you can target it that way. It just It's going to share it to your personal. And is that the same with Google Plus? Yeah. It's the same in that it's not quite... It's not quite like that. So it you know it looks good, but not as useful as it could be. But I will mention another extra site where we can set it up to share to all the networks, much more targeted. But I'll get to, to that in a moment. So, well, this goes back to the idea of previously of do we want to share the same thing to all networks, which as a beginner is good because I'm, I'm getting my feet wet, but as a little bit more seasoned, we don't quite want to share the same thing to all networks because then there's nothing unique on each network. So when you're connecting, like if you connect to Facebook, you end up connecting to the personal Facebook mm -hmm. versus the business mm -hmm. or your page. Yes. Okay, so you can't like they may have changed it recently. Can I do business to the business page? Uh, maybe, but probably not. I haven't done this very recently because for our clients we do it individually. Okay. So for myself, I, I don't I don't use this. And, and they may have fixed it, and they may have made it better that now you can connect business to business. I sort of doubt it. Yeah. The way to find out is to connect it, see what happens, or maybe look it up on their help screen apps. Um, you can use Pinterest on various websites sometimes to log into another website. This is very common that you use one website or service to log into another service. Um, so it's a very common, if I'm going to create a brand new account somewhere, it often asks, why not create your account via Facebook? So what's happening there is basically you're logging into Facebook, Facebook is vouching for you and sending you back to the network. This network never sees your, your Facebook credentials. Facebook sees your credentials, verifies you, and sends you back to Pinterest. So if you've done that with Pinterest, if I've gone onto a brand new website where it's all about baking and everyone is chatting about baking and I want to get in on the conversation, I could possibly use Pinterest to create an account quickly on their network. Pinterest vouched for me and let me into their website. It would show up right here. I haven't connected Pinterest to any other network here. The point of this is maybe that other network got hacked. I want to then disconnect my connection between Pinterest and the other network. But at this point then I want to save if I made any changes. From this account, from this screen that is, this is the profile screen. You can always get back to it by going to more, my profile. But this up there then shows your official Pinterest link. I didn't change it so it kept the numbers, but I would want Victor's Bakery if it was not taken. And that's my official Pinterest link that then I can share on Twitter, that I can tell people in person, that I can have on my business card. So I have my own little piece of Pinterest with my own unique address. That's the username that is unique. So out of curiosity, who is the other Victor's Bakery? Uh, nothing there for some reason. Yeah. So just that last little part is the piece you're talking about or the whole thing? Just that. Technically the whole thing, because you need Pinterest.com slash Victor's Bakery. But the username, kind of like Twitter, it's very common to say, you know, follow me at Victor's Bakery. Very similar on Pinterest. I could say follow me at Pinterest Victor's Bakery. Or in this case, Victor's 224. Yeah. So whatever bio I write will be listed here. My followers are listed there. Who I am following is listed there. Um, clicking on following shows me these are the various topics that I followed. I no longer no longer want to follow those topics. So then I guess possibly those topics do show up in public, perhaps. Let me check that. I'm going to go over to Chuck's. He set this up a while ago, so he might not have that. But if I go over to Chuck, I can choose to follow him. But I'll see what is he following. Pretty much every network lets you spy 
on what other connections people's, people have, unless they change the option. So I can go look at a competitor's Pinterest account, who are they following, and then I may decide I might have some value there. Uh, topics... he doesn't seem to have topics. He is following people, he is following boards, so you can see other people's stuff and they can see yours, so perhaps don't follow embarrassing things. <laughs> if it's business. This is a strategy. I'll, I'll make a note of it now and come back to it later, but this is a similar strategy for every other network. Spy or reconnoiter someone else's account to see their connections to possibly you get those connections as well. So one way to build an audience, one of many, check who your competition or colleague is following. So go to their profile and view following. <coughs> then follow some or all of those <coughs> accounts that will then create a notification for the account you follow, like every other network. If I follow someone on Twitter, they will get a notification that says, Victor's Bakery followed you. So follow some of those accounts, that will create a notification for who you followed. Result may be a follow back. You may get... Uh, you may get that follow back. I, I followed John because he was interested in baked goods. John then gets a notification. Victor's Bakery followed you. At that point it may end and he goes on with his with his life. He may go to my profile to check me out and follow me. At the moment, however, I have nothing of value in my profile, so I probably won't get fo followed. I don't have any pins, I don't have any boards, I don't have my logo. So before doing this part, this still relates to this is why I said, as soon as possible, set up your profile. We still have a little bit of setup to do, the pin boards and such. We'll do that in a moment. Put a little bit of aggression here, which applies to every network. Go check out who these, who your competition is following, and connect with them. They may follow you, and you steal a follower. All's fair in love and Pinterest. So there's no uh, negative to being a follower of many different. Sometimes people have the theory that if you are following a lot of people and you have comparably less followers, you're not so valuable. That is that if I'm following a lot of people but none not following me back, my, my account's not that good, perhaps. So I personally try to um, have a kind of a ratio of who I am following to how many followers. Uh, comparatively lower that I'm following compared to who are following me. So if I have like a hundred followers, I might be following 20 or 50 or so, maybe a hundred, maybe one to one. But if I'm following 500 and I've only got a hundred followers, that is a bit of an indicator to some people that I'm perhaps I'm a spam account. I'm just trying to follow, follow, follow to build a, to build followers. And this is one of the ways to build followers, but not the best way. It's one way. The best way is our actual content, which we will do. So I'll say here as a caveat, as I have here, result may be you may get followed back. Don't abuse this, this method. You following a lot, whatever that is defined as, you following a lot and not having a lot of followers is often a, an indicator of a newbie or spam account. If we are able to follow a bunch, and if I'm saying it's useful to follow, the extreme of that is I'm going to follow 100 accounts every day. Every day I'm going to follow, follow, follow. I'm just trying to play the numbers. 
there that is a spam tactic as well. You're you're engaging in spam tactics, which may be detrimental to you. So I can't really tell you a ratio. Make sure it's one to twenty-five. Okay? Can't quite say that. But personally, if you look at my accounts or my clients' accounts, usually it's often in the realm of like, you know, uh, if if the account has two hundred and fifty followers, we try to keep it uh, less than two hundred following. I try to usually keep the number of following less than the number of followers, and often be even lower than that, like fifty percent. So I might do, you know, a hundred. So timeline kind of expectation, just starting these accounts and stuff like that to get followers, if you're active daily and stuff like that. I can't quite give that answer because it's going to depend on your business. You may right. be very active, which is very good, but perhaps the product or thing you're, you're trying to sell is not is not reaching the audience. So I can't say in how much amount of time you'll build an audience. Some people take off really fast. Some people take a little while. So that's why your own goal for yourself is you, you will be active once a week, once every other week, post something, post different things, try the various other techniques we'll talk about. Little by little, you'll start to build an audience and then it'll snowball because popularity breeds popularity and then eventually you'll get, be getting more and more. I have a couple of clients like on YouTube, it started off very, very slow. Like it, it was like six months before like it got a couple of followers. And then as more followers and viewers on YouTube started to build, now that account has just reached like 330 followers in a pretty fast amount of time on YouTube, but it's a snowball. So I'm going to go back to profile. Before trying to build those followers, I have something I need to have something to show for it. My uh, recommendation is three pin boards. So let's look at how that works. Go back to your profile. Here's a view of my boards and a view of my pins. So a pin is an individual post, an individual photo, an individual video. A board is a group, is a collection of that item. So it's a topic of pins. Under boards here, we have very easily here, create a board. These can be created and deleted whenever you want. So I will create a board. Name, and here again is the active voice. Create a board with a name like places to go, recipes to make. If I simply created this board called travel, it's not too meaningful. But what if I created something even more like Travel America, or Traveling in California, or um, Essential Travel Items? They're all about the same kind of idea, but some are better than others in that it's more active, there's adjectives, there's verbs, rather than just nouns. So for Victor's Bakery, I'm going to make a board called Halloween Treats. So during Halloween, we sell, uh, you know, uh, bat-shaped cookies and orange frosting cupcakes and all of that. So the content related to that topic is a pin board. I can do secret or private boards if I want, but that's usually not useful for a business. You want it to be as public as possible. Although a use case for that would be for the VIPs. If you have like a mailing list of people, you could be sharing the link to that secret board with only certain people. That could be one way to build an audience in your in your mailing list. So this is Halloween treats I'll create. It used to be that before you fully created it, it would ask you to fill in a few more things. But now, for the purposes of expediency, it doesn't let you do that, which I think is, is a shame. I liked it when it was a little more detailed before, because you're going to miss a lot here. I created a board, but I would say it's still incomplete. Click on the pencil to edit the board. 
And now here's a spot where you can write what the board is about with more detail, with more keywords and complete sentences to help you get found. That name is good, but a description is better because then I can have more terminology here that helps me get found. So we can say something like uh, kid-friendly treats that are perfect for Halloween We only use the best organic ingredients in our fair. So whatever I want to say here that describes this board, but I don't have to rack my brain to have a long tail keyword strategy here. Uh, just something here to get the point across because the content itself is what will get me found easier. Question? Would you put hashtags in a description like that? Uh, you could, but again, the, uh, the, the, the pins themselves are going to be more valuable than what we write here. Cookies, cakes, etc. But the, pin, the pins that we'll share is where we want those. Here's a category. There was no category set up. Again, it used to ask you this as you completed your board, and now we have no category. So perhaps your content won't be found as easily. So definitely you take a moment to, to go here, and there's many more categories here than at the beginning when we set up the whole account. Food and drink. Not secret. Pinterest has a rather clunky way to have more managers. Over on Google+, Plus, we can add other people to help us manage the account, to add posts and such. On Facebook, we can do the same. On Pinterest, the closest is that we can add collaborators to individual boards. So again, pretty clunky, because if i got seven boards, I have to go to this screen of every board and type in the person's name or email to add them to this board. So if I wanted to add other people to also post into this board, I have to add them as collaborators. They, of course, need to have a Pinterest account. Although here, it, it would let me create, uh, it would let me send an invitation email. So this would send an email to people. But again, not not that good because I can't fill in a complete, uh, you know, distribution list. I have to do it individually. I can also connect and find people that I know on Facebook, Twitter, or Google Plus, or Yahoo, if they have a Google Plus account. So you do want to create the boards and also complete the boards. Create at least three pin boards. Edit the boards to add description and category. Optionally, you can add collaborators. Yes. How important is a category? Because like there's nothing business here. It's just like managers of others, or is that like, let's like, let's say some of these are not quite specific. I want to do real estate. I, I don't I don't see real estate, so it has to be a professional services or business person. Exactly. It's 
it might not be quite specific. So if something kind of makes sense along those lines, I would pick it. And if it doesn't, you'd have to go with other. So uh, there's a lot to choose from, but not exactly <coughs> professional services, because it's not quite tangible. I guess they want to focus a little bit more on the tangible things. So these are related to when we were choosing those topics. Remember when we created the account and it said choose five topics? Well, when the new person clicks to create topics or choose topics, if I've got my items in food and beverages, this could be a way for my content to be shown on the food and beverages topic. I'll save that, and then I'll go back to the main profile. You can click on your logo here or at the top right and we want three or so boards and the reason I said then we need to start to pin them is because these will appear empty and so you'll have all of these boards of organization and people will visit your profile and say oh there I'll see stuff about Star Wars and I'll see stuff about realty and I'll see stuff about finance but then there's nothing in the boards so why would I follow so a good goal is three of these, and then we'll add content to them. So it's a straightforward process. I'll create another board. Um, this one will be maybe one focused completely on uh, like uh, child-friendly uh, recipes. Again, I'm trying to sell baked goods, but it's okay to give away a little bit. It's okay to give away a version of the recipe. Uh, as we'll see how, in a moment, I want to share this content and I also want to be stealth promoting myself. We'll see how in a moment, but we'll say um, kid-friendly recipes. The way that I would edit this to be more complete is to say something like check out our, or simply say our um, easy, kid-friendly versions of um, some of our most popular bait goodies available in our eShop too. So this is the classic marketing technique of giving away something for free and then having a better version not for free. So the kid-friendly version omits the good stuff. And, uh, and then you can buy the originals on the site. That assumes I've got a website or an eBay or an Etsy or anything like that. What I could do is add the link directly to my shopping cart and such as a landing page to guide people directly where I want them to land the to. Food and beverages again, and I, I would, uh, if it would make sense, I might vary up the categories a little bit here just to try to reach more of an audience. So for the moment I'll do two, my goal is to do three. But then we'll go on to actually pinning something on Pinterest. Any questions, however, on creating these boards? Pretty straightforward. The purpose is to organize your content. All right, so to actually add content, there's a couple of ways to do it. Two or three ways. At the top right corner, you have the plus symbol to add, to pin to Pinterest. If you hover there, it says save from website or upload an image or create an ad. Let's first look at upload an image. If you click there, it opens up for you to select an image destination URL, which is optional, with a little help item here, you have the option to link a website to your PIN. 
So we're able to share a picture and automatically attach a link back to my website. I've got a few sample pictures if you'd like to use them. Obviously you'd be using your own pictures um, for your own content. We've got a few sample pictures. I think I said it on previous networks, but I'll say it again here. Focus on your own original content. So doing reshares or retweets of other people's stuff is okay to kind of mix up what you're posting so that it's not the same things over and over. But really, you want to focus on your own original content. You want to focus on your own pictures of your own products, because why give free publicity to others? So here I would say 80-20. 80% your own content versus 20% uh, repurposed content. That is someone else's posts and such. And again, um, it has some value, but you're giving free advertising to someone else. With your own 80% content, you can also break that down to be new content and old content. You can share a pin or content that you created a year ago, share it again for your new followers, and your old followers may recognize it and remember, oh, that was a nice post. So you can reuse your own, your own stuff again if you let enough time pass. But you know, if every other week you're sharing the same thing, then the account is 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 stale, and why would people follow? One of these clients that I'm doing some of the social media for at the moment, I'm going back to some of the things we shared a year or two ago, and I'm sharing it again as a as a nostalgia post. Those are popular too. These TBTs. If you've heard of TBT, that's a Throwback Thursday. So TBT. Throwback Thursday. So that's on Thursday. Share an old uh, photo. Share some old content. Uh, people share an old high school photo. Um, for businesses, we would be sharing something that happened in the business previously. There's also WBW. What's that one? No WBW. Way back Wednesday. So on Wednesday, share something old. These are um, these, however, focus a little bit more on uh, on Twitter. These are very popular on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, there's also Motivation Monday share something motivational on Monday, because it's Monday. There's other days of the week that have other, these sort of like topics. Uh, if you never knew about these, don't worry, you can still, you know, share anything, any interesting thing on any time of the day, but there's sort of like trends. Of course, there's TGIF for Friday. It's a couple for the weekend, but I don't remember them at the moment. So today is Friday. Uh, I could think about how does that relate to the topic of Friday, to share something, but I'm thinking about sharing my own content. So what we were about to do was we were going to upload an image. I'm going to borrow an image that we've got here. So if we click Upload, on the left side panel we have Pictures. You can go to Pictures and there's a few sample pictures. This is a testing account, so it's okay that I'm sharing one of these sample pictures. For your own account, of course, you would want to share something unique. And 
options. So from these sample pictures, I'm going to borrow one of these pictures. None of them make sense for my bakery. Let's just choose whatever. It's going to upload. The destination URL says here it's optional, but I would recommend to always put a destination URL. So when you when you share by uploading a picture or video, always add a link. The reason for that is if you just upload the picture, it's a bit of a dead end. If you add a link, you could guide people back to your website. If I'm showing a picture of a cupcake that I'm selling, why not then make it obvious that they can click to buy the cupcake on my website? This guides people back to your shop, your new shop. The link then travels with your post, your pin, if it's repinned. So it's so common that someone shares something somewhere and then the originator is lost. The picture travels around and gets lost. Who knows where it came from? Whatever cachet you might have gotten, whatever viral fame you might have gotten went away because someone reshared it and then they went away. Pinterest has a very good attribution system in that whatever shared and reshared on Pinterest, the origination, the originators come with it. So you share something and you've got a link back to your own website. And uh, if you do it right, like this, if you add your URL. Perhaps add a landing page link to the pins. Landing page, a special page on your website that is only accessible a special way. What I mean by that is if I'm on a website, most websites up on the menu, I have the home screen, the about screen, the contact screen. Those are normal screens that I can get to on my website. I'm going to have a special discounts page. The only way to get to the discounts page of my site is via my tweet, or via my pin, or via the link in the bio of my Facebook. Therefore, it's a landing page. You can only get to that page in a special way. Follow me on Pinterest to get my special links. Repin this pin, which then goes viral and shares to more people, and they can then get the link to the special page. That discounts page is not accessible on the menu. I have about, contact, and shop. The only way to get to, get to the discount is to follow me on the networks, to, to be in the know. And then they get the guide to the page from these accounts. Like through a pin, a link in your bio, in your profile bio, a newsletter. So I'm about to pin this. I'm going to add an address. Picturesbakery.com would be fine. A better would be some sort of page. So let's say I've got other pages. Slash discount onehtml That assumes, of course, that this has been created on your page. You have to um, you have to create that somehow on your page in, in WordPress or Dreamweaver or whatever your site is made out of. Um, and that's a link direct, that's a landing page to a direct page. I share that. Next comes, okay, where would you like to organize it into? I have these various boards. Imagine that that is a real picture of one of my real Halloween treats. Well, I would put it in Halloween treats, where at the moment I got a new idea and I can create a board at this moment. 
But this pin will need to be organized somewhere, so I will save it somewhere here. Let's just say Halloween treats. As soon as I click it, it saves it there. I may get a, uh, a pop-up that says, if you like that, you might like this. So it's recommending you here Nabina's uh, board. I can uh, follow it, I can see it, I can ignore it, it goes away. My boards eventually will happen like that to other people too. So as I create boards and I add things to those boards and someone shares a new uh, cupcake photo, it may pop up after they share theirs and says, if you like cupcakes, you might like this cupcake, and it's my cupcake. I shared here, it doesn't quite show up sometimes. It's always a good idea to refresh, reload, and then it should pop up right there. So I've got one item in this board. And I'm saying we can create as many boards as possible. I recommend three. And then into those boards, start to put three or so things into them over here. Then at least three pins on each board, because then they'll look pretty empty, incomplete. So you want to add more content to that board so that it looks like it's got something. Yes? Can you repeat one more time how to upload a photo? How to upload a photo? Well, you go to the plus, you click upload an image, and then there it is. So this board right here at the moment has one pin, zero pins here. I want to then um, add more pins. More pin there. It, it may be that maybe the account isn't verified, but it should let you, even if you're not verified. So uh, this is one of the ways to share. We upload a photo. It might be that some people have a slightly different terminology here. I've seen at least one example now. It says pin. Rather than upload an image, it says pin. But that's the same sort of idea. It looks like you did have create, add, and save from website, so then there's pin. That's one way. The other way to share is um, from a website. Let's check that one out for a moment. If I go back to the pin button, the plus, and click save from a website, what this one will do, I think this one's a better way to do it. Um, needs a little more setup because this is going to grab a picture from a link on a website and automatically put the link back to the website. That assumes you've got a picture on a website. And here it's also going to say, to do this easier, why not get the Pinterest browser button? If I have Google Chrome and I add this browser button, what will happen is, as I'm browsing various websites all over the internet, and I find something cool on a website, I'll have a button, I don't have it installed here, but I'll have a button that says pin it. And I'll be able to pin a graphic directly to Pinterest. That's one possible reason to use the pin it button, the pin browser button. But it only works on Chrome. So let's say I use Firefox, or let's say I use Safari. I can't use it. The other way to do it is I type in an address where the picture is. So let's say this, of course, doesn't make any sense for um, my baking, Victor's Bakery. But I've got here a very fascinating article on the top five ETFs for your 2017 IRA. And so let's say I am a financial services website, and I'm using Pinterest to reach an audience to do financial consultation. So I want to share this blog post to Pinterest. I don't actually share direct articles or links. I share pictures on the article. So in this article, there's at least one picture 
I want this article to show up on Pinterest so that those that are interested in finance find my article. So this is the link that I would copy and paste here. Pinterest will scan the page, find pictures to share to Pinterest. These are the pictures it found. And once I choose any one of these, the link will automatically be attached back to the blog post. I want to get traffic to this blog post. Ultimately, this site, I want to get hired for financial consultation. So I'm going to put this blog post free article on Pinterest and hopefully get traffic back to the site when people then click contact or hire or whatever. But you see the roundabout way. I don't share the actual link or article to Pinterest. I share a picture attached to an article to Pinterest. This one's the video, this one's the pictures, these, etc. So Pinterest found these links, uh, these pictures, at that link on that site. I'll say I'll share this one. This will this will have the uh, the link automatically back to the originating page. I just need to put it into the right board. Again, none of these make sense for this fake account, but at this point I could create one. Financial advice. Real world financial advice. Easy to follow financial advice being more detailed, more descriptive, being having an active voice. Once I create it there, it's selected there, it saves to the board. It's going to save to the board in a moment. It will then also show me a pop-up about if you shared this, if you liked this, you may be interested in that. So hopefully I didn't break Pinterest. Hmm. Uh, a couple of days ago, Amazon had a huge outage, and Amazon runs a lot of the world's websites. So perhaps we're still feeling some of that Amazon outage and uh, Pinterest is suffering for it. Yeah. I got a question real quick. When you're on a website, browser website, that sometimes there's like the pin to Pinterest and all the other things on there, mm -hmm. you set that up, does that set the idea on the website itself? Yeah, on the website itself, often easiest in a, in a WordPress website, there's going to be an option to turn on those, those features, the social media. So like on this one, this has the Pinterest button built in there. But that's because in WordPress it was activated. So mine's still thinking. I'm gonna guess I'm gonna refresh it and hopefully wake it up. I'll try that one more time. Save. I might have already done it. We'll check the profile. Yeah, I guess it already did it. It didn't seem to have responded. I refreshed it, but it seemed to have done it. I went back to my profile. It created the Real World Financial Advice board. It put the one pin into it. So I put it in the board. So those, are, those are the two big ways to share. I can upload a graphic. I have to remember to put a, a link. The other way is I can share a page on my site, a graphic that's on a page on my site. That assumes I have a site with at least one graphic that, in, that Pinterest can extract and then share to Pinterest. Very similar to boards, where if I went to the board, I can edit the board's descriptions. I can also further edit 
options of my pins. And just a few months ago, this was also part of the step to pinning on Pinterest. I guess they're trying to make it really streamlined for people just to use Pinterest, be on Pinterest, use it quickly. For us as a business, I think it's a little annoying. It used to be that as I'm about to share that pin, I can also do other things such as add a description with more spots for me to add tags, hashtags, and text, and to perhaps place it on a location. Now I have to go back individually to each pin, to each post, each, each thing shared, and craft each one. And I would, because your competition perhaps is not doing it, because it's so quick, sharing and sharing and sharing, and you're taking the, the time to go back and crafting each of your pins a bit, to go in and add the text, or the actual recipe, or another link in the description, in addition to the link of where it came from, and adding it to places could have value. Uh, you can search for anything, and when you find something, all the pins, types of pins, buyable, picked for you, promoted. So you can attach a location. Next question. Mm -hmm. You had said that we can go to our competitors page and click on their profile to see who they're following. We can't figure out where that is. Well, uh, you go to profile and then it'll show it there simply saying follow me. Mm -hmm. But that's my profile. No, oh, their profile. But how do I go to their profile? You need to know their profile there. So let's say you're going to see this person. to on a different window and find that link in question and then paste it here. It's, it's not that, that quick, but if you add the browser button to your browser in Chrome, you're in Firefox, so, oh, okay. so you'll have to, <clears throat> on another window, go to the other site, copy their link, and paste it here. I see. So I would also go here and craft the description of your pin to put some text in here to help it get found. Is that a better place for the hashtags or still not the best? This, this would be better, yes. This would be the place where I would write, you know, uh, what is this pin? Uh, just, you know, I'm writing anything, uh, old family recipe. Here I would do healthy, DIY, whatever. But similar to um, Twitter, I would not go overboard. I would not write 30 hashtags. I would keep it concise with less than five. Because then spammers do the extremes, which is that I'll write 30 hashtags to try to find as many people. Well, they may work temporarily, but then the account will get flagged as spam. And you don't want to do things that make you look like a spammer because then your account could get shut down. Well, I'm confused. Hashtags are not just for Instagram. They're for exactly. Pinterest, for Facebook. Many, Facebook. many uh, networks use hashtags. Yeah, and the purpose of the hashtag is an active link of a topic. So Twitter pioneered it. And like I said earlier, all the sites are homogenizing a bit. They're all kind of borrowing ideas from each other. So eventually then Facebook started to use hashtags. They haven't really quite taken off. You could use hashtags there. And then Pinterest uses it and Google+. Plus. Google+, Plus, they didn't quite take off on Google+, Plus either. Communities took off there. So it doesn't hurt to give them a try. But really, Twitter is the best place for hashtags. And Pinterest, too.
Uh, Instagram also is a very good place for hashtags. So let's say I craft that post a little bit more, and then now it's a little bit more findable. Let's take one more short break, uh, and then we'll go on with a few more tactics. Just five minutes. It's 12.25. We'll take a break in 12, until 12.30, and we'll go on.